going today just because I need a chance to outdo you. Okay. <clears throat> so are you ready? You have your thesaurus out? I do. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> don't. I don't really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to end up defaulting to glorious. <laughs> It's just a good word. It's a great word. No, I'm going to go with welcome to. <laughs> I'm going to go with this. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to surprise you with the word choices. <clears throat> I'm ready. Welcome to another episode of Of the Publishing Persuasion. I am here today with my magnificent talented the pirate queen the angela montoya how are you today my gorgeous co-host i'm good that was a great intro melanie schubert <laughs> melanie schubert the amazing the one <laughs> just kidding don't forget glorious <laughs> glorious the pink queen <laughs> melanie schubert um, no, I'm good. I'm really good. We just had the best time talking to Emily Thieves. So I'm feeling on a, just a, I'm on a high right now. I feel great. Yeah. And, and I'm getting ready to go on a little vacation. So I'm just excited. Yes. yes. So, I'm on um, a high as well from that. She's just such a vivacious spirit and it's, I don't know, she just belongs on this podcast, you know, like I just literally felt like it was our third co-host today in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like she has this energy that she brings and I was just like, I could just listen to her. <laughs> What's that? Am I saying I could just listen to myself all day? <laughs> that was the wrong time to make the comparison, but no, good job getting her on because she was amazing. And in particular, it really stands out to me. Watch to the end listeners because it really stands out to me what she said her advice to listeners at the end about kind of like the different stages of the writing journey and being a good friend and challenging mm -hmm. yourself to be a good friend I mean it sounds simple like growing up you hear you know be what's that saying but like you know <laughs> I don't I don't know. I'm waiting. You know, like treat someone the way you would want to be treated, oh, but there's a better true. say, ah, it's biblical. I think do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. There's my old Sabbath <laughs> school things coming back to me, but like, <laughs> but like, it's kind of, it's so true to like, hold yourself accountable to that through this journey. I think like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I got sidetracked. With no, I, I do. Well, it really, it was so real what she yeah. said and, and not, we're not trying to give spoilers because you have to listen to the whole thing. But one thing that really, I was like, oh, that's true because you do go through these different yeah. waves and layers in this publishing journey. You know, it's mm. you, one day you may make friends with somebody and you know, they catch a deal and they're skyrocketing, but you're still where you were. And so it, it is this weird dynamic shift that constantly changes. And so it's true. It's being conscious of being a good friend throughout all of the stages. And it does change. It is weird. Sometimes there is jealousy, but it's never like a, I want what she had. I want hers or theirs, you know, it's, I, I want that too, you know? So it's, hmm. it's this balance and, and learning to grow as a person, as a friend too. I, yeah. she, she hit it. She hit it on. She hit it. And I think it's about not comparing your journey. Cause I think that's, we talked about that before, but that's kind of what steals the joy. If you're kind of like, well, I'm here and they're there or like, it's never got, you're never going to be happy you know, mm. and I choose to look at it now. I think because I've kind of been on both sides of the swinging thing, I'm like, I, I know how desperately you need that support when something's happening for you, because it is no less scary. It is like a million times more scary. That's when you need your friends the most, you know, and vice versa. Like you need people who just are like convinced that you're going to make it, you know, and that's, you need to have that balance. Otherwise, 
I think that you lose those friends along the way if you can't find the balance between it. Yeah. So and it is I'm hard. Getting chills. I'm getting chills all this whole episode. Yeah. <laughs> so good and you really, you do need friends when you're at your lowest lows, but almost more importantly, like you said, like when yeah. you are at your highest, because you need someone, it's lonely to celebrate on your own. Like that's not fun. Yeah. And so to have somebody there at your corner, that's cheering even louder than you are for yourself is so special and mm. necessary. And it's like, I just think of our, you know, our group chat and like, literally we could just say we did one thing and we're all like, <laughs> yeah. and you know, it's like yeah. all the exclamation points. And you just need that. You just need that little boost of serotonin sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. And I think like, I would encourage writers who are feeling like, you know, if they're feeling left behind, just to remember that like nobody understands like your writing friends and, you know, they have got your back and they're going to cheer for you the loudest, like you said, over the smallest little things, they're going to cheer so hard. And it's like Emily said, it's, it's not like college you don't all graduate together and go start your jobs at the same time it's you just can't compare it to something like that the journey is so twisty and varied for everyone but what I see is like if you're disciplined and passionate and you just keep going like it a lot of our guests it's taken them like it's 10 years kind of seems to be like from starting writing to actually getting published it's this big long twisty journey and I think like just know that in advance, just if you're listening, know that in advance, it, it could take that long, but that is not wasted time. That is not empty. Those are your education years. <laughs> and I already like agree with what she said. There's just stuff that I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I took this journey. I feel like now I'm writing more my voice. You know what I mean? It's just. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's absolutely true. And I just, think of the first book I wrote and if if that was the book that I sold it would have been a disaster yeah it would have been so bad and you know so you go through your journey and it's the journey that you need to be on totally. you know or even like on the flip side I did well sell my first book I don't know if you call it sell I got picked up by a small indie press in America and I was so like I don't regret it now but looking back the naivety I had I had no idea what I was going into and like didn't really know the difference between indie and I was just like somebody wants to publish my first book yeah and like, I'm grateful for the part in my journey, but I also, that experience is what made me so stubborn to not rest until I find an agent. Because yeah, like when it came down to it, it, it came out with more of a fizzle than a bang simply because I was their first book. By the end of the year, they decided they didn't want to be a publishing house anymore. <laughs> and I was like, well, do I self-publish? Do I like, I was still so green all those words were so foreign to me. And so taking that journey, like I'm lucky I was able to flip it and be like, no, I'm even more stubborn. But that could crush some people, you know, like having your first book fizzle out, you know what I mean? And yeah, you've just got to keep, keep pushing on and take those experiences and just go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's it right there I, I don't know where I was going with that I kind of you went, went there, there. <laughs> you went where you needed to go and I went with you Melanie <laughs> I have to tell you I've started watching the k-drama you said the business proposal uh-huh I know I know is it k-dramas just do they just do it right yes it is so much angst so just so much yearning the yearning it's like YA for adults right like the intensity of the stuff is just I love it so much and perfect rec is just what I needed right now but I agree I feel like K-drama just does it better <laughs> like they do they just because it it's 
they don't make it so easy. Like they have to work to be together where yeah. a lot yeah. of like, I guess, Westernized shows, it's like, we're good. Like, yeah. I like you, you like me, we're good. We're fine. <laughs> Come live with me, <laughs> you know? But like K-dramas, they have to work and they make us work for it. And oh man, I watched that whole freaking season like in two days. I love I that. Know. I love that journey for you. <laughs> Thank you for knowing what I meant. <laughs> no, I do love that journey for you because when you find something that just hits that good and we're bringing it back to writing, like it always does remind me how I want to write. I want to write things that are just like quaffable, like you just gobble it up and you're just like, I cannot rest until I finish this episode, you know? That's yeah. the goal, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that is exactly the kind of stuff I wanna write. I wanna write just like that, where you just have to know, and you already know, like you know they're gonna get together, but you have to know how. <laughs> yeah. And don't you think K-drama does really well, like these little human nuances? Like mm-hmm. the two girls, the girl friendships that I see lately in K dramas, all the little girly things. I'm just like it. It's like celebrates these little human things we do. That like yeah. as you go about your day, you might think it's ridiculous, but when you see it on screen, you're like, oh, I do that. Like, oh, you know, yeah. it's actually. It's true. I love their friendship. The two, I love the 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 girls friendship so much because they're such dorks together and like drunks and (laughs) they're they're so cute and it it really does feel like real and then the character he has me literally like laughing out loud cracking up and I'm by myself is um I think is like Mr. Guy, or I don't know how to say, like, but he's the co-worker. The one with the glasses. Yeah, he, he slays is. me. He slays me. Because it's so, he's so stoic the whole time. Like, it's just, he just drops the bombs and you're just, like, not ready for it. <laughs> I adore him. <laughs> I love him. I love all, they, they just, it's just so great. So now I'm just like, okay, what's the next one? I'm ready. Oh, I got a list for you, baby. Okay. I got a list. If you have well, a friend. A friend told me to to try Goblin, and I know yes. you. That was the first one you recommended to me, so I have to like get on the website and yeah. and watch it. It's free. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. If it's not a legal website. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just like a. It's just a Vicky Vicky dot com. <laughs> okay, that's what he said. I thought it was like on the low. Like, okay, here's the website. Now I'm not sure. That's why I'm like, <laughs> no, I think you're right. I think it's, it's just a website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't go to Vicky, the other one is hometown cha-cha-cha. I don't know if you saw that one yet. Okay. I've seen it. I keep seeing it pop up. So I'll do that one too. It's everything. <laughs> we diverge to chat, yeah. drama, which I just think is super important to discuss because it's everything but it's writer inspiration yes we should probably read emily's bio though will you yeah. be honest <laughs> yeah. i can do it if you want <laughs> you, i butcher it every time i cannot like pronounce words so i'll let you do it okay i'm now gonna butcher it myself <laughs> <clears throat> no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Everything hinges on this moment. So Emily Theed is the author of This Vicious Grace. A former public school teacher, Emily teaches creative writing and serves on the board for Writer House, a local writing nonprofit, and co-hosts the Basic Pictures podcast. That's a tongue twister. I nearly got lost yeah. in there. An alumnus, <laughs> of Pitch Wars, an alumnus of Pitch Wars, an author mentor match. She loves mentoring aspiring authors, fostering kittens, and getting lost in the woods near her home in central Virginia. Emily spent the first half of her life in New Jersey and the rest of Virginia. So she talks fast, but knows how to use bless your heart effectively. I don't know why I said it. <laughs> I just <laughs> picture her saying it. After yeah. a childhood reading in trees and dreaming of riding dragons, she loves to write stories with high stakes, lots of heart. That's what she said, humor. And characters who cope with impending doom by bickering and bantering with friends and foe alike. Emily is represented by Chelsea Eberly at Greenhouse. 
I can't wait for you guys to listen to the, her wisdom and her journey. So let's just get right into this episode. Yes, I can't wait. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm glad I follow you on all the platforms. So I realized there would be a video component. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad that we otherwise yeah. I'd be ducking underneath like the bed right now. So <laughs> yeah, I guess I should have made that more clear. I'll work That's on all right. that. I do my research. On. Good. Well, you look great. You look Thank your, you. Your setup is amazing. So my microphone falls over dramatically. Very cool. Yeah. And I'm realizing <laughs> I should probably warn people as well that I'm recording straight away, but we were missing things when I wasn't. So I was like, I'm just going to hit record straight away so we don't miss any of the gold. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all right. I have a podcast too, but we don't do video. So I was just glad that I paid ah. attention. I didn't show up like in my pajamas with <laughs> looking a mess. So <laughs> yeah, I actually, I love your podcast. I listen Thank to you. all the time. I know you had uh, one of our past guests, Lissa, on the show. Yes. I love Lissa. She's, she's fantastic. Were you her mentor? Yes. Okay. I was. I was her 2020 mentor. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I got really lucky. I, I was, I mentored for two years and I'm super sad that Pitch Wars is over, but I feel like I, I don't know, like knocked it out of the park. Like I picked two great mentees. They're both doing great. And there's a bit of a, like, I just like put a hat on it and I'm like, I did it and we're done. Like it, it feels really good. Yeah. That's it, awesome. Yeah. And very successful. You did it. You did yes. well. Launch the little and birdies you, out of the nest. Yes. That's so, I love that. I love it so much. <laughs> Let's get right into the interview because Let's we have it. lots to cover and it goes so fast all the time. Melanie and I, every time are like, how did, how did this time go? So yeah, the 45 uh, minutes is like a, it's a ticking clock. I like it. Little, little pressure is good for me. Yeah. It's very on point with us writers, right? We have to have the ticking time, time clock. Yes, totally. I'm just laughing right now because I'm remembering that meme Angela posted about millennials on and I can see myself, like how millennials in the Zoom, they're like, mm-hmm, trying to like, you know, just like, yes, I hear you, girl. Yes. <laughs> and I can see myself in the corner now, and <laughs> I'm just going to embrace this part of myself. That's right. Look, we have to learn to love ourselves. That is our character arc. Here for it. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes. So it's tell so us where it all started for you. Oh, goodness. So I was not one of those people who has been writing my whole life. Um, I wrote a, let's, we'll say a Save by the Bell self-insert fanfic in middle school with my friends. <laughs> um, but then after that, I stopped for a very long time. Um, I actually think I got too much praise for writing as a young person and the pressure turned up and I wanted to be good at it. And I knew that I wasn't. And I knew that I didn't have a whole story in my head. And I think I read some article by an author. I think I know which author it was and we will not name that human. Um, but it was basically about how they had an entire, let's say seven book series in their head when they started writing. And at the time I internalized it as all authors know the entire story before they start writing. And I know I didn't have that. Um, I love to kind of tell myself stories before I would fall asleep at night. Um, you know, kind of like fan fiction created from books and movies in my head, but I didn't have a whole book. So I didn't write for decades. Um, and then actually back in 2015, uh, my youngest child had just started sleeping through the night. So I had gone through three years of no sleep. And I was like that, um, there was a TV show at one point where someone like took a pill and it unlocked the 80% of their brain, you know? And so I came off of three and a half, four years of not sleeping. And suddenly I was sleeping again. And I felt like a superhero. Like I had all this brain power. I didn't know what to do with. And my mother said, have you heard of NaNoWriMo? National Novel Writing Month, because you should try it. You should, you've always talked about writing, just sit down every day for a month and see what happens. It doesn't have to be good. It's not supposed to be good. It's just a challenge to sit down every day and see what happened. Um, and so I did, I did that in November of 2015. And at the end of the month, I had a book shaped object that was terrible, but I had been smart enough to know that I didn't know what I was doing. so I didn't start with a good idea. Like I started with a bad idea. But at the end of 30 days, I had 60,000 words and kind of a plot. And I realized, okay, I can do this. I just can't wait for the idea to show up. So I was hooked. I started writing a better idea. I worked on that through 
2016 and 2017, I applied for Author Mentor Match, the mentorship program, crickets. I think I applied again, crickets. I think I applied again with the same because they had three or four rounds a year. I got one uh, rejection that was very much like, you're a good writer, but I hate your concept because I think I know where you're going with it. And I realized, oh, I was not setting up this story correctly at all because this mentor had come to the entirely opposite conclusion of where I was going with this speculative science fiction book. So I revamped it, I revised it, I learned how important it is to set reader expectations. Uh, and then I applied to Pitch Wars and I got in in the fall of 2017. Uh, I had an amazing experience in Pitch Wars, met some great people, learned so much from my mentor, had a lot of people saying like, oh, you're gonna crush it. You're gonna be a bestseller. This book is so good. And I was like, yeah, like it did it. Just like knocked it out of the park first time, woo. Um, and then I went into the showcase and fell on my face. I mean, it was, it was a young adult science fiction, kind of dystopian. Um, that was not what was in at that time at all. And the first few hours of the showcase, I sat on my couch while you know someone got a request and someone else got a request and then 10 people got requests and then someone else got 20 requests and it just kept going up and up and up and nothing was happening nothing just crickets and my mentor was like it's okay it's okay like maybe there's a glitch maybe they're busy maybe they're sleeping um and back in 2017 the agent showcase was all visible to everyone so the entire, and that was like a few years after Tomi Adeyemi oh blew up. Like, I mean, everyone in publishing was watching in real time as I metaphorically got on stage and realized I had no clothes on. And it was devastating. I mean, it was just crushing. Um, I remember going to the writing nonprofit where I volunteered the next morning, sitting, literally did not turn the lights on. I was the only person there, left the lights off, very dramatic, YA mood, sat there at the desk and cried <laughs> because I had thought I was going to be a star and I was just devastated. I eventually got a few requests from really good agents who said really nice things. I picked myself up. My friends kind of helped me dust myself off. I queried that book. I think I sent over a hundred queries. I spent a year doing it. No luck. Um, in the next few months, I started writing a new book, another why science fiction. I applied to Author Mentor Match again. This time I got in. I was like, all right, cool. That's fine. My little hiccup. I got it. Um, you know, it took me a while to finish revising that book, started querying that one again. No luck. Um, and so that brings us to early 2019. And I realized my journey wasn't the longest, but it was a uh, really intense, you know, <laughs> it was like a decade's worth of rejection crammed into two years and very public. And I think at that point I thought, this isn't fun anymore. Like this is torture. And I was so happy for my friends. I was thrilled to be friends with people that were succeeding so hugely and so publicly. And I loved being a part of that experience, but I thought I need to either just be content being the friend of writers or I need to find some joy in it because this is no longer fun. This is not healthy. This is not good for me. And so I decided to write this ridiculous book that like, I didn't even know what to do with it. It was supposed to be sci-fi, but I knew it couldn't be sci-fi. So I tried to like make it into fantasy. Um, and I started drafting the book that, that became my, my debut. And it was just for me, it was just a way to refine my joy to write everything I wanted to, to not think about the the market or what people wanted. And really, as I started writing it, unfortunately, I fell in love with it. And I was like, oh no, now I have to make it marketable and see what happens. Um, so yeah, I queried that in fall of 2019. And um, my now agent actually, this is like a super long monologue, sorry. Um, no. <laughs> my now agent was, <laughs> she was an editor at a, a big five publishing house. And I had a friend who messaged me and said, hey, this editor at this big five publishing house is switching to agenting. Like you should query her. This was two weeks into my querying journey. So I bookmarked it. I wrote the query letter. I got it in my drafts folder and like 8 a.m. the morning she started, I like flung that thing like, right into her inbox. I mean, I might've been the first person that queried her in her entire agenting career. <laughs> and I got a request the next day. She emailed me a week later saying she wanted to have a call and you know, the rest is history. So so that's the short version, <laughs> the long version. Sure. That was I, there was so much to unpack there, and so much that's relatable. <laughs> I I can totally relate to your pitch wars experience, and like I think that 
a lot of the pressure that comes with that is for months and months, you have people telling you, your book is amazing. It's going to yeah. do amazing. And it is a very public platform to fall on your face. And, but it's not really falling on your face. That's yeah. what I realized. It just feels it, like it. It certainly feels like it. And it's, yeah, it's a lot. It's very condensed. Very, yeah. I agree. It's like 10 years of pressure over yeah. two years. So, and you've no. seen people launch their careers overnight. And so yeah. you think it could be me. And every year I get out there and I'm like, all right, everyone, like dream big, but just recognize that that's not the majority. And every year I hear, I can just see people going, yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. And then two months later, they're like, I should have listened. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry. It's not the, it wasn't the program's fault. It's just, yeah. I think to be a writer, like I always say, in order like to be a politician, you have to be like a bit of a narcissist because you have to think that you're so great that you should run for office. And I think writers the same way, like we're all insecure <laughs> bundles of anxiety, but you have to have a little streak of arrogance because otherwise, why would you attempt this ridiculous, impossible dream? And so, yeah, part of us always thinks we're going to be the one and it hurts when you're not. It just does. Mm. It, it, yeah, I I hear you. I hear you. But it's funny because I was just thinking this today that you really do have to have your own back and be like, no, bitch, you're good. Like, you yeah. <laughs> and, and it, it has to be a constant stream of like affirmations to yourself, because at the end of the day, if you're like, no, like, I really can't write, then there's there's no point. So yeah. you have to really believe in yourself. And in like the highest way of like, mm -hmm. no, I got this story. People need to hear it or read it and, and put yourself out there. And if you kind of don't learn to have thick skin as well, because it's going to be out there and not everybody is going to love it. Like you assume, um, you know, it's just all part of this like wild journey. And I think pitch wars, author mentorship, author mentor match, querying, you know, it's like, it's all just building and helping you develop. And I think we've talked about this yeah. before. It's like, it's all part of the game. And I just, I know this is kind of funny, but um, I just watched JLo, um, like give her like acceptance speech on MTV. You know, she won like, I don't know, lifetime achievement award. Yeah. But was like thanking all the people who said no. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, that's good. Oh, I know. It's so, true. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to hear. And I think, you know, I, I struggled because I remember being in that position. And if me now went back in time and told me of 2018, like, you're going to be glad you got rejected with these books. You're going to be glad that they died in the queer trenches. I would have punched myself in the face. <laughs> But now I'm like, I am, I am glad those weren't the right books. They felt important and they were important and I love them, but they weren't the book and I wasn't the writer I needed to be. And I think if my first book had succeeded, I don't think I would have become the kind of author that I want to be. And I don't think I would have had the resilience that I have now. Whereas now I look at this book and I'm like, I love this book with all my heart and soul to the point where I kind of don't care if people like it. I want them to. Professionally, I do. But if my book flopped tomorrow and no one ever read it again, I would be sad professionally, but I would be very happy as an artist because I really, really love this book. I wrote it for myself and I love it. And it's the best I could make it. And my previous books existed to help this book come into existence. And like, I, again, 2018 me would hate 2022 me, but it's the truth. So I'm content with that. Oh, I love it. I got chills with you just saying that. Like, I'm <laughs> proud of the 2020 you. 2022 yeah. you. I don't even know what She's year. She's been through a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, can you tell us what this Vicious Grace is about? Oh, good question. <laughs> My book comes out in three weeks and I still don't know how to pitch it. Okay, so um, this Vicious Grace is a, a YA fantasy that takes place in an Amalfi Coast-inspired world where Alessa is chosen by the gods to save her island from a sort of recurrent apocalypse that comes once every generation. And the way it works is that she is given this gift where her power alone doesn't do anything. She has to magnify a magical partner's gift. And unfortunately for her, her first three attempts to pick a magical partner ended in them dying as soon as she touched them. So when we meet her at the beginning of this vicious grace, uh, people are really starting to wonder whether the chosen one was 
poorly chosen and whether or not they would be better off, you know, unaliving her so that they can get a better one. And she's not quite ready to give up on her mission or herself. So she ventures out and she finds a bodyguard of her own who is a bit of a, an outcast and a misfit named Dante. And she recruits him to come back and just keep her alive long enough for her to try one more time. Um, but Dante has some really dark secrets of his own. And he might be the person who can help her figure out her gift, or he might be the one who can take her out once and for all. I think I did okay. <laughs> you did great. It's a lot of publishing crazy. professionals worked very hard <laughs> to craft a pitch <laughs> that I still can't say verbatim, but that's okay. <laughs> no, I want. Thank you. It has been described as a, a rom-com smashed together with a dark fantasy. And it it really was my attempt. I love adult um, contemporary rom-coms. Like I love banter, I love humor, but I also love like the 90s action movies where everything is life or death. You know, you're falling in love as the asteroid is colliding with the earth. You're finding your found family. Like it's just everything I wanted to be in a book. And when I wrote it, I thought, I don't know where this fits at all because back in 2019, dark fantasy was so in, everything was moody and broody and everyone was sullen and gothic. And <laughs> I love that too. And I tried so hard. And then I remember seeing someone post on Twitter saying your author brand on social media should, should match your book. And I thought, but, but my book's a dark fantasy about a girl who keeps killing people. And my social media brand is just me this overly talkative person with ADHD who cracks like that's what she said jokes. Those don't match at all. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to change myself? And then I thought, no, I'm supposed to change the book. And so I wrote myself into the book. And so there's this kind of warm and fuzzy rom-com kind of smushed into the middle. But at the same time, like you still don't know if anyone's going to live or die or what's going to happen in the end. So so far, people seem to be liking it. Yes, I want to read it even well. more now. I'm so much more excited after that. And I can really <laughs> relate to like early days coming to writing and feeling like I had to write something dark and, you know, like deep. Like I think I started writing some moody poems about war or something like really way back when. And I was just like, and, and from that, yeah, you start to read more and you're like, oh, yeah something dark something that really hits hard but yeah like I'm a cheesy goofball who loves mm -hmm. like the most cheesiest like just loved up stuff and like yeah with bits of that it has to have the edge mm -hmm. as well for me but give me all the cheese I am here for all the cheese all day every day <laughs> I want, I, I like to describe it as the, um, the chubby hubby, which they might not have where you are, but it's an ice cream flavor that has like caramel and chocolate covered pretzels. Like it's salty and it's sweet and it's like all the things. And I've decided that that is what I want to be my author brand, that you're going to read my book and you're probably going to cry. You're probably going to scream at me, but you're also going to laugh and it's going to be sweet and it's going to be heartwarming. But like, it's not a true rom-com in that you can't just like sit back and relax and trust that everything's going to be fine. Like I'm going to make you sweat a little bit. You're probably going to want to throw a book at me, but it's still going to have all the best parts of all the things I love. And so, yeah, I mean, if you dropped me a person into the middle of a life or death fantasy, this is what you would get as someone that was like, I know this is serious, but that statue over there really looks like a you know, because I can't, I'm just, I cannot keep a straight face. And that is Alessa. And I love her dearly. This poor girl has been locked in a tower for five years without any human contact. And then you stick this, you know, hot bodyguard in a room and girl cannot be chill at all. Like she's trying so hard and she can't do it. And it delights me. And I'm just thrilled that it delights other people. Because when I wrote this, I thought people are going to say, this book is weird. And so are you. And now I'm realizing that we're all a little weird and that makes me really happy. Oh, I love, I am so freaking excited for your <laughs> book. Like send it now. I want it. Like, it sounds like everything I've been looking and waiting Thank and you. searching for because it's true. Like you, you come through these trends, especially in YA and you know, you get your fill, but there's always, there's something, there's something that I've been missing in it. And it feels like this. It feels like I hope so. It was really me just taking, I mean, I was taking all the things I loved from different genres and different mediums and different just everything and just kind of squashing it together and saying, sometimes I just wanted the comfort of sitting down with something that had all the flavors that I wanted. And so I wrote it and it turns out maybe I'm not the only one. 
Oh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Write what you want to see on the shelves. Exactly. And then I became a mentor. So I got to not only write what I wanted to read, but then I got to pick out other books that I wanted to read and help them on their way as a career, which is amazing because now Lissa, who you mentioned earlier, her book is coming out early 2023. My 2021 mentee just signed with Josh Adams of Adams Literary, and I have high hopes for her book as well. And I just thought like, what a gift. Like once upon a time, I would have just died of shock to have my book or my name anywhere near a book. And my book is not out yet. And I have an entire shelf of books that I'm in the acknowledgements or in the dedication. And then my book comes out in three weeks. And then after that, I get to know that there are going to be more books on the shelf that in some small way, I got to help them get there. And that is mind blowing. Like, I hope I never stop being amazed by that because that is so much cooler than I ever thought my life would be. And I'm so thrilled. You literally made me well up just now because I (laughs) agree with that so much. And I think like when the trenches are hard, when the pitch was like, that keeps me going. Hey, like that part of the community that like, it's, it's just this beautiful community we're part of. And like, I think there's like this, it's like our book babies, you know, we're like part of their birth into the world. I'm like, I'm a book auntie now. Like, I feel like, although (laughs) I will say my 2021 mentee, I comment about being a book auntie and she was like, I think technically you're the book grandma. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're not playing that game. No, we're not. Auntie, we're sticking with auntie. (laughs) Do not put me in that category. Do not make me a granny yet. I'm too young to be a grandma. (laughs) I still get get pissed when someone's like, thanks, ma'am. And I'm like, I am not a (laughs) ma'am. I live in Virginia, so I get that a lot. Because like the second you're over the age of like 19, you're a ma'am. And it's like, "Mm, am I though? Don't Meanwhile, go. I got ID'd the other day buying wine and I was like, yes, thank you, Jesus. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my kids, I'm like, you're going to, in a few years, you're going to be like, mom, you don't understand what it's like. And I'm like, I live in an 18 year old's head for all my working hours of the day. So I do understand what it's like to be young, even if you think I'm old. <laughs> I'm hip. I'm young. <laughs> on TikTok. Regular mom. I'm a cool mom. (laughs) I'm convinced we always feel like those teenagers that we were and anyone who doesn't has either like died a little on the inside. I mean why authors definitely do. (laughs) Yeah or is trying really hard to pretend they're not but like I think feed your inner child, grow the inner child. Like I think we'll all feel the same at 90. Hopefully we're still up (laughs) Yeah, I think we're all just faking being adults. Like that's right. <laughs> that's the truth. One hundred percent, all the time. So I see you have two different co- covers of I this do. vicious. Girl. So can you explain a little bit? Is one the UK version? Yeah. So this is the US version, um, which yes. is yes. stunning, and I love it. I did not. I had no idea how they were going to come up with a dark fantasy rom com Italy colorful book cover um but Carrie at Wednesday Books is an absolute genius and I love it um and then this is my UK cover uh which mm-hmm. is also gorgeous and completely different so different yeah. com- the color schemes the only thing that they have in common is the lemons which I love um and I am limited in what I can say but there will be other well there will be other international covers coming soon I know I've seen uh, and I've shared a German cover I don't think I've seen it, but there are other, there are other, there are other covers that will exist. Yay. People will find out about soonish. So I'm really excited. I have one more, like the first author copy, finished author copy I received is one I cannot share or say what it is. And that has been killing me for about six weeks now that I'm like, I have a final copy of my book and it is tucked away so that it will not accidentally show up in the background of any video. <laughs> and I was like, what kind of cruelty is this for an author to be like my baby? And now you go in a box, but yes, I look forward to sharing all of them with the world soon. That is the cruelty of publishing. Is it? it is. Everything is a secret. Everything. <laughs> like we're gonna be waiting pros by the end of this. Oh my like, gosh, yes. <laughs> so what's you... left? I feel like I now finally I'm not as compelled to tell secrets because I feel like all right, like a, it's pretty soon things are going to come out. So it's very calming to be like, all right, we're in the home stretch now. People will know stuff soon. So we'll see. 
Yeah. How are you feeling with it being so close around the corner? Like the highs, the lows, how's oh, it all? Gosh. Um, the sequel is trying to kill me and that has, for better or worse, distracted me from a lot of the debut pressure um, because mm -hmm. I was supposed to turn it in a few months ago and instead of turning it in tomorrow it's fine <laughs> and that's just the first draft it's fine <laughs> um, um yeah there's a weird balance of i'm thrilled that people are liking book two you know we've had i think my publisher has sent out i think hundreds they've been amazing about sending out advanced reader copies but i at this, this point i think i have 500 plus reviews on goodreads i haven't read them but they exist, um, which is amazing. But it's like every day people tag me in reviews saying, I loved it and I'm excited about the sequel. And I'm like, that's such a nice thing to say. And also so scary while I'm writing the sequel and it's not being kind to me. Um, so there's a lot of pressure on the sequel. And oddly enough, I've just started waking up nervous at 4 a.m. every day. And I don't know why, because I keep telling myself like the book's already written. Like nothing happens in three weeks. Like they get mailed out, but nothing happens. I don't have to do anything. It's not like I have to get on stage and do a dance or something. So I don't know why, but it's like my my brain and my body are not communicating about the fact that all that will happen in three weeks is just, I will wake up and social media will exist. That's it. Um, but yeah, so I'm but that's nervous. Scary. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> the social <laughs> scary, media, scary. that is like the, probably the scary part because social media is like a bit of a beast of burden these days like it's either gonna be yeah. like totally epic you you log on and it's gonna be everything or it's gonna like rip you to shreds like you don't know depending on the day you know <laughs> like yeah so far people have been phenomenal and considerate in that when i get tagged in things they're positive yes. that doesn't mean there isn't negative stuff out there but they haven't tagged me to which i say thank you i love you so at least in terms of like what has been thrown at me, it's all been really good, which is fantastic. Um, but yes, there is a level of like, once it goes out into the wider world and it's not just people that are really seeking out advanced copies, people who are reviewing, people who are bloggers, and influencers, then it's just everybody. I think the the rules of etiquette start to fall apart probably pretty quickly. <laughs> so we'll see, <laughs> good times. Now, are you ever tempted to go on Goodreads and sneak in there or are you just like no we're not even I used to there were a few times like earlier on where occasionally like I would have a glass of wine and be like I'll just filter by the five stars and honestly it was wonderful I mean it was I would cry with happiness people were so kind I loved seeing that people recognize the things that I really worked so hard on but in the past few months I I don't know I don't know if it's because I get tagged in enough stuff that's really positive I've had enough book you know, booksellers and book reviewers reach out to me specifically to say nice things that like it kind of filled my emotional well. And I was like, you're feeling good. Don't stick your hand into the lion's mouth. Um, but I haven't been tempted in a while. Um, I might kind of give it one last skim before the book comes out because at that point I need to just like lock down Goodreads and never look at it again. But, but yeah, so far I've been really lucky. It's been all, all positive that I have seen, which again, does not mean it's all positive. It just means I'm being strategic about what I seek out. Yeah, well, I think that's smart on it. Like, I'm sure some people can handle reading all of the things, but I know for myself, no. Yeah. <laughs> Hard no. Um, I love feedback, but it's too late. I can't fix it. So <laughs> I don't need the feedback now. That's the thing, isn't it? I think yeah, that's good self-care. Sorry, Monty. Yeah. No, no, go for it. I think it's good self-care. Like if you're feeling in a place where you feel like, and. I mean, even if you're feeling strong, those kind of lower reviews are going to affect you <laughs> on yeah. some level. It's and I still have to write the sequel. <laughs> to just filter it by five stars. Yep. And also disclaimer to people still tagging authors in bad reviews because it does still happen. Don't do it. It's yeah, not nice. It. There's a person behind the book, you know. So just had to say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotta remember that we are human beings darn yeah. it you don't go to someone's house and then tell them that the dinner dinner sucks like you, you can write the yelp review but you don't tell the chef it's just it's different right yeah yeah and it's, it's exactly it it's so easy to tear something down that mm -hmm. you know trolls sat behind their computers it and i always think about like if if it's coming from like a place of hate like is that what you want to do with your time? Like literally <laughs> like invest time in like spewing venom online. I just, yeah, 
I'm not here for it. But I see how time is already. Like I know. I'm sorry. I talk a lot. The ADHD. It's evening. Um, <laughs> we just not a lot. <laughs> no, I everything you've said, and you've pretty much answered a lot of the things that yeah. we were hoping to ask. So, I mean, honestly, everything you have been saying, I've just been taking it in, and just like I know, I know our listeners are really going to resonate with a lot of the stuff you said because we all go through this and you know it's it's about the journey and Mm -hmm. and meeting people along the way and you know building books and I love that not only are you building your own books but you're helping in the community as well and it's just such it's so special and you know it's it's really fun to watch so Thank you. Thank you for being a mentor as well. Yeah. As oh, it's been a joy. Writer. It's so fun. Yes. I sink my little claws into my mentees. Like, listen, Sophie, they cannot get rid of me. Hopefully they don't want to, but like, it's like, you thought you were just getting someone to critique your book. And now I'm like in their DMs every night being like, want to watch a TV show? Let's talk about this movie. Let's talk about our books. But it's been a real delight. It's been so much fun. Oh, I love that. Now, is there any special advice you would give well, let's just go with just authors, just people starting out in this wild world. I would say find your people and put conscious effort into being the kind of writer friend that you want to have. Mm-hmm. And that changes throughout the process so many times. And I know a lot of times that I've thought that I was being a good friend while I was querying with my friends who were querying. And then I thought, okay, well, I'm being a good friend while they get an agent and they get a book deal. Um, But then it's a different experience to be a good friend when you're the person who gets an agent and gets a book deal and your friend doesn't. And it's a different thing to be a good friend to someone who suddenly you feel like their fame is skyrocketing. Like it just, publishing is never a clear straight line up and everyone's journeys are going to go up and down. And it is so rewarding when you genuinely can find the joy for your friends when they are doing great. I mean, it really, really is. I know it sounds cheesy, but I have been fortunate enough to have friends who became bestsellers before I had a book deal. And yeah, sure, I was jealous, but I let myself be truly happy for them. And now years later, when I stress about silly stuff, while I also know that I'm getting a lot of you know great marketing push and great responses from readers, I know I have someone that I can turn to and say, hey, I'm worried about this little tiny thing and they're not going to resent me for it because they've already been through it. But at the same time, I want to be there and I want to support my friends that are not quite there yet. And so I just try to tell all authors, like, trust that your time will come and ask yourself when your time comes or when your time isn't coming right now, what do you want your friends to do and be there for you and try to do all those things? Because there's going to be one day where you're going to feel like you're left behind. And there's going to be another day where you're worried about leaving someone behind. And if you can manage to be a good friend to them at all those points, then you're going to have someone to share your journey with when, when you need them. And it sounds cheesy, but it's true. And it's so much harder than it sounds. So like make it an effort. Don't just assume that you're going to automatically be an angel because it's not always easy. Yeah. My whole entire body is giving you a standing ovation <laughs> right now, just so you know, because that is like, it's so self-aware and it's so fucking crucial in this industry because I've been on both sides and I've seen how it can destroy relationships when the self-awareness isn't there. And, yeah. and I've seen how it can just be everything. And you're just awesome writer community when you just help each other shine. So thank you to take, you took thank us to write a church just then. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you, thank Crazy. You, <laughs> Hallelujah. Like I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so it. much for coming on today. It's honestly thank been you for having me. a delight. And I, which I know I say this every time, but seriously, this time, the time just evaporated. And yeah, you're welcome back on any time. You are Pub Persuasion Girl for life. <laughs> Thank you. This is my actual first podcast interview. Like I have a podcast, but I've never been interviewed for a podcast. So really, oh, it's like, it's like the mirror just turned around all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, oh wait, we're talking about me. <laughs> so thank oh, you so for honored. giving me this opportunity. <laughs> Well, you're a pro. You are a talking is what I do. <laughs> for for better or worse, that is that is a me. <laughs> so, and I uh, thank you for letting me. Yeah. Where can our listeners and viewers find you? 
Uh, I'm across social media at EKT Writes. Um, working on the TikTok, studying yours, Angela. <laughs> um, I'm better at Twitter because Twitter requires no forethought or planning or filter, and ADHD is good for that. Um, but yeah, I'm all those places. And then my website is ekt.com. Well, we are just so excited for you, and I cannot wait to get your book Thank in my you. hands. It sounds absolutely glorious. So thank, thank you again for being on the show and just taking the time to of course. just give us some knowledge and take us to writer church. Thank Anytime. You. I know a lot of our listeners are going to resonate so much with, so thank you for your rawness and your honesty. And cause that's what it's my pleasure. That's what we really need in this industry. Cause it can be quite solitary. And I think when we share these stories, like what we've actually gone through to get there, it just makes the writing world a better place. <laughs> Agreed. Thank you so much. Thank you. I was going to cut us off any second. So have I a know. wonderful night. And Nailed it. Yeah. Stuck the landing. Good yeah, job, Dee. Right. Way to go. <laughs> Smooth sailing. That was pretty good. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. This was great. Thank you.